All right, so I want to fast forward 30 years. More than 6 billion people will live in the world's cities by the year 2050. Those cities make up a tiny fraction of the world's land. But here's the thing. Disease spreads in confined spaces. So it, let's explore the ramifications or the implications with Michael Varelia, who is back with us. So, Mike, experts are a warning of this in years to come. Yeah. How will the COVID-19 pandemic impact cities? That's the great question, Jane, because we've been hearing these warnings about urbanization and the problems, the traffic, the congestion, the pollution, all that sort of thing. But perhaps COVID-19 is going to force governments to rethink about planning and investment when it comes to infrastructure and it comes to rural areas as well. So let's explore um, some of those issues very quickly. Of course, the crowd is the big problem when it comes to coronavirus because it spreads in crowds. I want to look at some of the world's most densely populated cities, Jane, starting with Dakar in Bangladesh, 44,500 people in a single square kilometre. So just basically think about the neighbourhood around your house uh, and try and fit 44,500 people in there. Mumbai in India, nearly 32,000 people. Of course, we know India is one of the most populous countries in the world. But also, Jane, Central and South America, about 20,000 people per square kilometre in the city of Medellin in uh, Colombia. Manila in the Philippines, if we go east, uh, about 15,000 people. Again, I'm emphasising this per square kilometre. And when we look at Africa, Jane, I've just chosen a few uh, cities for you. Casablanca in Morocco, about 14,000 people. Lagos in Nigeria, one of the big metropolises of uh, Africa, 13,300 people. And if you're wondering about Johannesburg, uh, just under 3,000 people per square kilometre. So compared to the rest of the world, we're not doing too badly, but let's dig a little deeper and we'll uh, explore uh, some of the stats when it comes to Joburg, Jane. 2,700, as I mentioned, per square kilometre. That doesn't sound too bad compared to the rest of the planet, but when you look at South Africa, our national average is less than 50 people per square kilometre. So again, it shows that we tend to have a lot of people congregating in the cities and then the rest of the people uh, really have a lot of space to themselves. Even the average for the rest of the world, Jane, is 59 people per square kilometre. So the key thing is using our space effectively uh, because as we've seen, cities are hotspots for viruses like COVID-19. Also makes you question government policy. I mean, why isn't more invested in rural spaces? Yeah, absolutely. And it's not just a South African issue, as we've seen. Uh, it's a problem around the world. Let's take a look at some maps, Jane. Uh, what you're seeing here is India. So in those red dots, 50% of the population lives in the red dots. 50% of the population lives in the orange area. Italy as well, Jane, it's a great example. Uh, so what you're seeing is that there are pockets of densely populated areas, and then there's a lot of space in the rest of the country. And we're seeing this in Spain as well. Take a look at that. In the center of the country, you've got that tiny red dot. That's Madrid, where we have almost 15% of the population uh, living just in one city. The United States, for example, this is a population of 330 million people. But take a look at those red dots half of the population uh, living there. And this is the global picture, Jane. This is really quite incredible. Uh, again, wherever you see uh, those yellow dots, that's 50% of the world's population living in that area. And then the rest of the 50%, the rest of the world's population living in the black area. So what we're seeing is really densely populated cities and urban spaces, and then a lot of space uh, for the rest of the world. And the logic here, Jane, is to try and use that available space much more effectively. Let's focus on some uh, of the, the, the world's regions, first of all, and uh, we'll start uh, with uh, North and uh, Central Africa. Just take a look at that, Jane. As I mentioned, the yellow dots are the populated areas. Uh, the black areas, much, much less populated. And you can see in West Africa, a few cities, a few urban areas, a few areas around the Nile River in Egypt, uh, but for the most part, it is largely, uh, largely spacious, if you want to put it that way. Let's focus quickly on Europe, Jane. Uh, and again, obviously Europe uh, is a, uh, a big continent, uh, but still plenty of space, Jane. I mean, take a look at that. The yellow dots, again, those are the cities. A lot of, lot of space in that particular uh, continent. And finally, let's take a quick look at the USA, just to show you once again on close-up 
uh, you know, how much space there really is. A few cities in the Midwest, a few cities on the West Coast, and of course the East Coast. Uh, but again, Jane, we have an obsession as the human race with cities. And it seems COVID-19 is teaching us maybe we need to think twice. Yeah. I mean, that, that really brings it out in relief, doesn't it? And looking a little earlier on at Asia, how densely populated it is there. Yeah. With little place to move, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's bring up Asia very quickly, and we'll show you that, Jane. Uh, of course, India and uh, China, two of the most populous countries in the world. But what you're looking at there on the, on, on the right there, Jane, is the east coast of China. Uh, but even there, if you look a little bit in, at the interior of China, you'll see... Uh, that there is a large amount of space, uh, not so densely populated in some parts of uh, China. So uh, perhaps a few lessons even for the Chinese who are famous for uh, their ability to plan and invest in infrastructure. Uh, even they might want to learn a few lessons uh, when it comes to uh, planning their landscape. Exactly. They could lead the charge. Thank you, Michael.